YouTube, what's going on? Thank you for clicking on the video. Today, I'm going to be running you through the best FPS and visibility settings for Modern Warfare 3 that are currently getting me around about 400 FPS and actually super consistently too. After that, I'm going to run through some controller settings too because there are a couple of key changes this year that are going to be super important to improving your movement on this game. If you head on over to the settings tab, the first thing you want to do is go to graphics, head into your display options and make sure that your display mode is set to full screen exclusive. Make sure your display monitor is set to your current monitor, your display adapter is set to your graphics card, and then that your refresh rate and your resolution match that of your monitors. This is really important to avoid screen tearing and make sure that your game looks really fluid and crisp and performs as well as it can with your PC. Aspect ratio you can leave to automatic or you might have to set it to your monitor depending on the size. I know some of the bigger ones it doesn't always update. Display gamma if you're playing on a monitor set it to 2.2. If you're playing on a TV set it to 2.4. This is really important for the way the color settings are built across different resolutions and just generally speaking you want to stick to the basics here. Brightness that's preference. I like to go to around about 60. That makes things a tiny bit brighter than they probably should be here. This left box is supposed to be not visible. I can see it just a tiny bit. I personally just think this helps overall visibility in game. NVIDIA reflex low latency is something you should test. I have mine set to on. I've seen some people set to on plus boost. What I've noticed so far is that most people that have actually been testing these settings are finding around about a one to two percent difference either way in their frame rates. For me, I lose about five or 10 frames if I have it on on plus boost, but when I have it to on, I'm getting the max FPS. So eco mode, leave this to custom. We don't want to be set on efficiency or low consumption modes. That's going to reduce your performance. VSync, make sure you have these set to off in gameplay and menus. You've probably seen this talks about before. It helps reduce screen tearing. Generally speaking, you shouldn't be dealing with too much screen tearing if your monitor settings and your overall game settings are all built properly. But having VSync on can actually cause a lot of input lag from your controller or your mouse keyboard, whatever it may be. So again, it's one of those things that's just not worth it. Frame rate limit, again, is going to depend on your system. I personally have a really high MPC. So me, I go unlimited, but I've only just upgraded to this new system and I used to be on a 2060 graphics card. So what I would do in that case, is I would just lower it to match my monitor. At the time I was running 144 hertz. Now my monitor can do 280. Again, try to build this to match your system. And if your PC frames can outperform your monitor frames, that's great you'll probably still be able to feel the difference in game and how fluid it feels. But if your monitor refresh rate is higher than your PC's performance, then it's probably worth turning down some of those settings, see if you can match things up a little bit better. Next, we're going to head over to the quality tab, and this is probably where you'll make the most of your changes. First of all, make sure that the render resolution is set to 100. Dynamic resolution, turn it off unless you have a really low spec system, in which case you can try it on, see if it helps. But it's really just there to prepare your PC for if your GPU is overloaded. Upscale and sharpening, this is something that you can play around with and find out what is best for you. The kind of community accepted favorite is Fidelity Cast. On higher end systems, I'd set this to around about 40 on lower end, maybe like 60, 80. Again, trial it, see what looks best for you. I think the higher you have it, the more of a bit of a grain you're going to get around objects and operators. That said, there are a ton of different options that you can try with your system. These scaling options aren't necessarily tied to your system spec, but they, you know, they will perform better depending on which make you're using. I've tried the AMD upscaling and I've had as high as like 700 FPS when I've been like sat looking at a wall. When, when I'm like moving around the map, it's more around about like the 580, but I find it to be quite blurry on my monitor and my monitor can only show up to 280 FPS anyway. Next onto your VRAM scale target, I'd recommend setting this to 90 and then seeing how your system performs. If you're having any issues or finding a stuttering, reduce this slightly. It can help to lower the load on your PC and then make things run smoother. Variable shade and I'd turn this off. And then we get into the details and textures. Now look, if you want max FPS, set pretty much all of these to low. If you want to get the absolute best performance out of your system in terms of the very smoothest experience, pushing the power to the last bit, then you need to set your expectations that the game's not going to look that great. I myself, I choose to go to normal. To be honest, I could go to high and have no problem. Again, this comes down to preference, what you're trying to achieve with your system, but try it at normal, see how it looks, see how your system performs, and then maybe go down from there if you need more FPS. Same situation here with the texture filter anisotropic. Having this set higher can help improve the visibility in dark lanes and rooms. It just helps to improve the lighting on different surfaces when you're viewing them at different angles. As you can see, I have mine set to high. If we take it down to low, it has literally zero effect on the VRAM usage. I'm not going to say that it won't give you a few more frames, but try it at high, at normal, see how your system performs again, and then work down from there. Depth of field you want set to off, so you don't have this blurry effect around your peripherals when you're ads Detail quality, I have this set to high, which does take up a bit more VRAM usage. It will impact your FPS slightly, but if you go down to normal, this will reduce. Then if you go down to low, it does not reduce again. So again, try this at normal. Particle resolution, make sure this is set to very low. If you set it to high, when you throw a third thermite or a grenade and you have like an explosion, you can see all of the effects of the sparks and the smoke coming off. But rendering that much information and that many little details and colors and stuff has a massive effect on your FPS. So to be honest, I really don't think it's worth it. Bullet impacts, personal preference. This doesn't seem to have any effect either way on your performance. Persistent effects, on the other hand, I turn this off. This is where you see like staining on the walls from grenade explosions, thermites, fire, etc. Shade of quality, unless you have a super high end system, I'd recommend trying this at medium. And again, if performance is poor, go to low. But the more of your settings 
settings that you have set to low, the worse that your game is going to look. So it really is about trying to find that balance so that you enjoy what you're looking at. You're not getting too much blur or grain on the screen and you're still getting great performance as well. On demand texture streaming, always have this set to off and same with local textures to low. Shadow quality, I have this set to normal. Screen space shadows, I'd have off. If you look closely at the pictures, you can kind of see that it adds shadows to your guns depending on where you are. This can kind of reduce your visibility when you're aiming, hip firing. And although it doesn't have any notable performance differences if you set it to high, I just don't think it's good from a visibility perspective. Occlusion as well, for performance sake, I'd turn this off. It adds shadows around things to make them look more 3D. The same goes for screen space reflections. You will notice a slight FPS increase by having this off. Setting it to high, it doesn't affect your VRAM usage per se, but you're rendering a lot more light and more colors in different settings when you have this on. So this is one of those options where I just turn it off and take the marginal increase in performance. Very much the same with the static reflection quality here. Have this set to low. Tessellation seems to add like a little bit of crispness in the uh, overall visuals for me when I'm in game. I only have it set to near, so it's only rendering the things that are in my immediate vision. We don't need all the details of everything in the distance. Terrain memory, have this set to minimum. And then all these other environmental qualities, the volumetric quality, deferred physics quality, like you want to turn these either low or off because they don't really benefit you in any way in game and they will hurt your performance. Before we move on to the view tab, do me a favor, guys. If you've learned anything or found any settings here that you didn't understand or that you're going to change on your systems to try and help performance, then drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be having loads of content coming for Modern Warfare 3 over the course of this year. I've even got like around about the next two weeks off work, so I'm going to be like fully focused on this. Really excited for the game and I'd love to have you guys in the community. Anyway, back to field of view. I have this set to 120. Honestly, when I go and play ranked games on Modern Warfare 2, for example, I had this set down to like 105. I think most of the CDL pros generally go between like 90 or 90 and 105, something like that. But that said, having 120 FOV makes the game look super smooth. It makes your movement feel really nice. I'm going to be making a lot of gameplay content. So having this set high just makes the game look as good as it can, I think. So that's my personal preference. You said it's yours, but bear in mind it's available on consoles now as well. So set it higher, see how you go. ADS field of view, you want this unaffected. This means when you zoom in with any scope that is below a 3.25 magnification, you're going to get like an actual increase on your field of view on what you're ADSing on. You have to look closely at the pictures to see it. It's, it's marginal differences, but this is a game where you kill and die really fast. So marginal gains make all the difference in this kind of game. Weapon field of view. This is a little bit personal preference. All of last year, I had this set to default. I'm trying it on wide now. I think with the view of the gun being a bit more zoomed out, you see just a little bit more of who's in front of you. There's less focus on like looking at the gun. You're looking in front front of you. So, you know, I think from a marginal gains perspective, this is beneficial. Motion blur and weapon blur, have them turned off. We're not in a cinematic movie. Similar for film grain, especially if you're on fidelity cast, turn this down to zero. It reduces some of that grain and almost like buzz-like effect that you get on your screen, that kind of white noise look. Then make sure that your camera movement is set to least 50%. This is going to mean that when you go into a slide, your screen isn't shaking with your character moving. It's literally the movement is going to be focused on the gun as opposed to you shaking around in game. If you have your camera movement on 100%, you're going to get a bit of shake and more of like an immersive feel. So this is having the screen movement on 100. You can see there's a lot of, a lot of shake there. And then if we set it to 50... It's just tighter. There's just less bounce when you're going in and out of these slides. And while this won't affect your PC performance, I promise you it'll affect in-game performance. Turn it down to 50%. Last setting I want to make everyone aware of is the inverted flashbang one. I have this off. This means when I get flashbanged, my screen goes to black instead of to white. If you play this game a lot, if you play it all day, every day, if you sit very close to your monitor or you have very high brightness, every time you get flashbanged, you're going to be putting your eyes through the works, man. It's personal preference, but I prefer to turn this to off. It is so much less jarring. Some additional view settings very quickly. Go down to interface, and this is in important. Head into your color customization. Make sure your HUD palette is set to default. In terms of these other interface settings, you can make them whatever you want. You know, if you want your cursor in game to be pink, then you can go ahead and change that and your squad member color. So this is how it's going to look in ground war, in war zone, etc. But then go into your color filter and make sure this is set to filter too. This is going to give more like depth and brightness to the colors. They're going to look more vibrant on screen generally. You can see filter one makes the reds really washed out. They've literally turned orange on the screen there, the enemies. Minimap shape, turn this to square. You see more, you actually have more coverage of the minimap so you can get more information when you're moving around the game and set it to rotate with you as well. So wherever you're looking, that is the forward direction of your minimap. If you go into crosshairs, you can actually turn the center dot on as well. You can see from this example, it gives you just literally a, a center dot in the middle of the screen. If you're not very accurate, turn this on and just try and move around the map and keep this at head height. Make sure you line your gun up with that. You're looking where you want to be shooting. Player names, I have this set to full name. This only shows up over your teammates, but sometimes because of the poor visibility, you can struggle to tell whether you're shooting at friendlies or enemies. So having that extended full name rather than only an icon or a brief 
radiation. It takes up more of the screen. It makes it very clear who are your teammates. Telemetry, this is one thing that I would recommend playing around with. If you just expand this drop down menu, I have my FPS counter on. It means I can see how my system's performing. If there's any notable drops, you know, if I'm performing half as good as I usually am, then I'll know. Server latency, this is going to tell me the ping. The higher the ping, the worse your game's going to feel. More delay and like almost lag. Packet loss is literally outlining when packets of information get dropped between being sent from your PC and being received by the server. If you have packet loss, it's a problem. It means you're going to lag. It means you're going to have stutters or jumps in game. You're going to rubber band back and forth. I personally have this on. In-game alert icons for network and hardware. I leave both these on. Again, don't see them very often, but if you have a system that's causing you any problems, overheating, etc., you're going to get warnings here. The same for if you're getting lag or you've disconnected from the game. Just finally, I'm going to run through controller settings. I'm not going to go into too much detail here because so much of this is based on personal preferences, but there are a couple of basics that you need to know because they're going to affect your movement and how the system responds to you on Modern Warfare 3 because of some changes that Sledgehammer have made. For the record, I'm going to be running through controller settings. Button layout, this is up to you. I run tactical. Anyone who uses a basic controller, I would always recommend that you run tactical. This is because it puts the settings for dive, slide, crouch, prone, all on your right stick, clicking it in there. That means when you're getting into gunfights, when you want to crouch, prone, slide, whatever it may be, you have to take your thumb off of the aiming stick to push a different button, which means if you get in a gunfight, you're gonna have the delay of a millisecond, a second, however long it is of going back from here to your aiming stick. You're then gonna have to react to someone who's probably already got the jump on you. Whereas if you have everything set to tactical already, then if you're, you know, if you're going pro and you're holding the stick in, you can already aim at people. That said, I don't know how new this is. I think it might've been introduced in Modern Warfare 2, but you can custom bind different button layouts here. Vibration, I would turn this off. You don't want your controller shaking in your hands when you're trying to focus on aiming. Dead zones, make sure Sure this is set up to your controller if your controller is brand new and you don't have any issues with stick drift you can actually turn this all the way down to zero which will give you like some immediate stick drift but this can benefit you in some ways with aim assist because you can feel like your left stick is always active which is what initiates the rotational aim assist for me my controller is in good condition i find that having it on zero messes me up a little bit so i've got my dead zone set as low as possible i have it set to two and then if you go and turn on test the stick dead zone you can literally flick your sticks around and when you let go of the sticks there should be no movement. Your ADS sensitivity transition timing, this is really important. Make sure it's set to instant. And that means that that ADS setting that you set up earlier, that's gonna activate as soon as you aim down the sights of your gun. It's not gonna give a slight delay after you zoom in or only activate when you're all the way down your gun. Aim assist, make sure you have this set to on. Default is the strongest here. There was a time where Black Ops was the best last year. But from everything that I'm hearing now, default is the best aim assist setting here. Automatic tactical sprint, I would have on. Auto move forward, have off. Tactical sprint behavior, set this to single tap run. Grounded mantle, set this to off so that you don't auto automatically go jumping up or over things. Airborne mantle, you can either set this to partial or off. Partial is really useful for war zone where if you're jumping off something and you're close to a ledge, you will grab it. But if you don't want to catch onto any ledge ever, and I know that's been a big issue in Modern Warfare 2, then you want that off and you want ground mantle hang off as well. Slide behavior, this is the most important setting to change for your movement. I'm recording this on the launch day. There is a bug in the game at the moment that's stopping tax sprint regeneration after you slide. But once that is fixed and tax sprint regenerates as fast as it did in the beta, this is going to change it so that your input will only let you slide by pressing it. If you have it on tap to slide or tap to dive, which means that you can do both inputs, the way that your controller works is that it will activate the input after a delay of checking whether you have only tapped or whether you have held so that you'd go into a dive. If you set this back to slide only, all your input can recognize is a button press rather than a hold. So as soon as your device or your controller recognizes that you've hit slide, it activates. You slide faster. We are talking milliseconds, don't get me wrong, but if you want to get rid of that slide delay, this is how you do it. Slide cancel sprint, have this on too. This allows you to click in the right stick or your crouch slide button again to cancel your slide and put you immediately in a crouch. Just means that the slide cancel behavior is super streamlined and responsive and easy to use. Interact reload behavior. I would always have this on prioritize. Interact for warzone, prioritize, reload potentially for multiplayer. Armor plate behavior, apply to all. Best setting for warzone. And that is everything for your display and graphic settings as well as controller settings there that are going to help improve your movement and your experience on Modern Warfare 3. Hopefully some of this stuff has helped you. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. I've been testing these settings since I got up and recording this. So I'm going to go and play some multiplayer now. By the time you're watching this, I will be live on Twitch. So if you want to hop over there at twitch.tv forward slash AdamXJW and come watch the camo grind, I would hugely appreciate it. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. We're going to have a lot more gameplays upcoming as we work towards the interstellar camo and then move on to the Borealis Zombies Mastery Grind. But for now, happy gaming and I'll catch you in the next one.